Islands are supposed to be sunny, peaceful, warm locales where you spend your time on the beach, maybe do a bit of snorkeling, and enjoy a fruity drink or five. But some islands that look beautiful are actually terrifying places. And we're not just talking about a creepy smoke monster. So, today we're going to take a look at the most dangerous islands in the world. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other geographical topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to feel those island rhythms. Located off the coast of Brazil, Ilha de Queimada Granja is a nice place you would not want to visit because it's home to as many as 4,000 golden lancehead pit vipers, one of the most lethal snakes on the planet. Also called Snake Island, this Indiana Jones-proof landform is roughly 110 square acres of predator-free rainforest, rock, and grassy areas for the lethal snakes to roam. A golden lancehead pit viper bite can be lethal within hours without treatment. And because the island is so dangerous, Brazil has forbidden humans from visiting outside of rare exceptions. And in those cases, you're required to bring a medical professional. During the 1910s, the island's lighthouse did require human maintenance. According to local legend, the last lighthouse keeper and his family were slain when snakes chased them out of their home fell out of the trees, and bit them. Luckily, that lighthouse has been automated since the early to mid-20th century. Wait, does that mean the snakes are operating it? North Sentinel Island is located in the Bay of Bengal, and it's harder to get a ticket there than to a Taylor Swift concert. Supervised by India, visitors actually need permission to even set foot on its shores. The restricted entry and limited contact with the indigenous people is as much for the protection of tourists as it is for the protection of the indigenous themselves, because they really, really dislike outsiders. After a 2004 tsunami, efforts to drop in relief were met with aggression. In 2006, natives whacked two fishermen for getting too close to the island. And in 2018, the death of missionary John Allen Chow demonstrated how dangerous it could be to approach its shores. Chow attempted to spread Christianity on North Sentinel Island, first getting shot at with arrows on approach, only to return the next day. The natives eliminated Chow during his second approach, and to maintain peace and integrity of the island itself, his body was never recovered. You can't say they didn't warn him. Coiba Island, off the coast of Panama, was home to a vicious prison full of torture, murder, and something called the Howler Monkey. You did not want to go there. In 1919, criminals and political prisoners first arrived at the prison. The remote location housed more than 3,000 individuals from 1919 to 2004, and was the site of torture, brutality, and horrific conditions for decades. Over time, Coiba Island had roughly 30 camps built by the prisoners themselves, with no furniture, windows, or bathrooms. The extreme conditions and torture techniques tested the prisoners' mental sanity. According to U.S. Army Ranger Chuck Holton, they had this ritual for new prisoners. The guards would take them into the jungle, blindfold them, line them up, and have a mock execution. They would put guns to them, count down three, two, one, fire, intimidating them. Needless to say, it was almost as bad as staying at Days Inn. Bikini Atoll, which isn't nearly as fun as its name implies, is an island within the Marshall Islands chain in the Pacific Ocean. In the 1940s and 50s, it was a U.S. military nuclear testing site. And at the time, residents were relocated to nearby atolls before arriving at Kili Island in 1948. Those indigenous to the island eventually returned to their atoll during the late 1960s, and the population even rose through the 1970s. But radiation levels left much of the food and water too dangerous for human consumption, and residents began experiencing adverse health effects. Continued cleanup, relocation efforts, and monetary aid left most natives living off the island, with scientists and caretakers as the lone inhabitants. When writer S.C. Gwynn visited the atoll in 2012, he saw firsthand the remains of destruction. Every man-made object on the island is an artifact either of the bomb tests or some failed attempt to help the Bikinians return to their home. There is a sense, while well, on Bikini Atoll, of being at the end of the world. So, not exactly the kind of place you want to take the family. 
The site of several World War II battles, Ramri Island, off the coast of Myanmar in the Bay of Bengal, is also known for the deadly crocodiles populating its shores. So if you're going there for a beach stroll, be sure to keep your crocs safe from the crocs. As British and Indian troops pushed the Japanese off Ramri Island in 1945, many Japanese fighters took refuge in the swamps. It was there that, allegedly, hundreds of men were devoured by crocodiles. Yikes. According to Bruce Wright, a scientist who fought as a member of the Royal Canadian Navy, the scattered rifle shots in the pitch black swamp, punctured by the screams of wounded men crushed in the jaws of huge reptiles, and the blurred worrying sound of spinning crocodiles made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on Earth. Clearly written by a man who never saw a Slayer concert, but his point still stands. At dawn, the vultures arrived to clean up with the crocodiles left behind. And of about 1,000 Japanese soldiers that entered the swamps of Ramri, only 20 were found alive. But another scientist, Stephen G. Platt, challenged this version of events in 2001, noting Wright wasn't on the island at the time of the massacre. Platt interviewed island residents who indicated only 10 to 15 men may have been attacked by crocodiles, if at all. But regardless of the exact casualty numbers, the presence of the predators was definitely of concern to soldiers in the Pacific Theater. A destination for avid swimmers, hikers, and bird watchers, Miyakejima sits off the coast of Japan. That makes it sound lovely. But it's also home to Mount Oyama, an active volcano that regularly spews poisonous sulfuric gas, which is decidedly unlovely. But what about all those swimmers, hikers, and bird watchers, you ask? It's not like they require everyone to carry a gas mask everywhere they go. Wait, do they? You bet they do. Everyone on Miyakejima is required to carry a gas mask. An alarms blare to alert people when it becomes necessary to put their masks on. The airport even sells gas masks. Although we bet you'll pay a steep markup, just like those neck pillows. In truth, those alarms sometimes don't go off for years at a time. But the island is still affected in other ways. As a visitor to the island noted in 2010, agriculture is still moribund. Perhaps no one wants to invest money with the insecurity of potential future gas eruptions, and no one makes gas masks for chickens or cattle. Gas masks for chickens. Somebody needs to go on Shark Tank. Stat. Officially the largest sand island in the world, the place once called Fraser Island, off the coast of Queensland, Australia, recently restored its aboriginal name, Gari. While that's good news for its population, its population still includes some of the world's deadliest jellyfish. In 2019, two women were stung by Irukandji jellyfish, whose venom can result in cardiac and respiratory problems, in addition to the terrible pain. The following year, numerous additional stings by the jellyfish prompted local officials to urge people to stay out of the affected waters. One jellyfish tip offered to visitors is to always have vinegar on you. But if the supermarkets are out, there's not much else that can be done. And alongside jellyfish, sharks swim offshore. Dingoes and crocodiles roam, and even sand dunes pose a risk for drivers. Seriously, everything in Gari is dangerous. Except maybe the vinegar. Located in the Indian Ocean, Reunion Island sounds like the name of a reality show where you have to survive on an island with your former classmates. And the truth is only a little less scary. While it is open to tourists, swimming and surfing are strictly prohibited. That's because Reunion was the site of more than 50 shark attacks between 1988 and 2016. And thankfully, the local government is way smarter than the mayor from Jaws. 11 shark-related fatalities from 2011 to 2021 included the demise of bodyboarder Adrien Dubosc in 2017. According to local officials, Dubosc was in the water with two other friends when he was bitten through the thigh and groin. Even though paramedics were quick to respond, Dubosc died within half an hour of the attack. In 2019, a 44-year-old Scottish man was attacked off Reunion Island, later identified by the wedding ring on his hand when it was found in the stomach of a shark. Maybe the shark objected to the proposal. During the outbreak of the Black Death in the Middle Ages, as many as 160,000 plague sufferers were reportedly sent to Povelia Island, off the coast of Venice, Italy, where they ultimately perished and were cremated. Legend has it that a significant portion of the island soil consists of ash from human bodies. So, you know, not the best vacation spot, unless it's Goth Beach Day. By the late 18th century, Povelia served as a quarantine station for visitors to nearby Venice. 
The facilities on the island were later transitioned to house the mentally ill, many whom were experimented on. Again, goths only. Sneaky goths, that is, because visiting Povelia is forbidden. But some individuals have managed to venture there. In 2014, photographer Mike Deer persuaded a local captain to take him to the island, although the captain himself refused to step foot on Povelia. Deer's impression of the island was one of peace and serenity, calling it a very quiet place. However, the number of deaths and reported abuses on that peaceful, serene island earned it another nickname, the Island of Ghosts. That uh, might be why it's so quiet. Grinyard Island, which also has the nickname Anthrax Island, is located off the west coast of Scotland, less than a mile from the mainland. It was a test site for biological weapons of World War II, and these tests involved putting anthrax spores into bombs and detonating them on sheep to see how long it took the effects of the spores to set in. You know, how did the part about bombing sheep get left out of the nickname? Grinyard Island was declared safe to visit in 1990, thanks to decontamination with tons of formaldehyde. But while a farmer does regularly visit the island to tend to its sheep and hunt its deer, locals still tend to stay away because there's nothing really to see or do that's worth taking the perceived risk, except bomb sheep. According to the island's caretaker, I'm not afraid in the remotest of getting anthrax. Nobody here has ever come down with it. I'd say there's more chance of a deer shooting back at me. So between the anthrax and the potentially armed deer, we'd say it's best just to skip this one on the itinerary. So what do you think? What's the most dangerous place you've ever visited? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.